Hey guys, this is GameCow, we are playing Toho 11 Subterranean Animism, yeah, we're on practice staff, sure. Um, yeah, this has been a hell of a long time in the making, and the major reason for that is because of, well, at the time I last did an LP, like September, my old laptop could not handle something like this for some reason, I don't know why it couldn't record this at all, and... Let's just say the transition to my desktop hasn't exactly been smooth, but now now I have like everything I really would need to have, I believe I can go ahead and do this and it should be okay. Hopefully. I'm still... it's still weird, like Fraps lags when I try and record this and Blueberry doesn't lag the recording but it makes the Bing stutter so I'm actually using XSplit for this, of all things, and it works very well so that's good. Anyway, this game is all about evil geysers and underground spirits and stuff like that, and it's all kind of just there, and I would say awesome, but I'm not quite sure that's the way for it. But anyway, basically, a geyser has erupted and hot springs have formed, and these two over here are perfectly happy with that. However, a group of yokai have noticed the evil spirits are on, on the loose as a result, and since they don't want to go underground, they're kind of making these two go ahead and do that. As you would expect, it's a Toho game, it's Marissa and Reimu all the time. They have to be the ones that go and solve the mysteries and stuff. So yeah, you've got three shot types for each character, six in total, it seems fairly standard. At most points nowadays, there seems to be six shot types in most of the games. And I guess it continues the trend of having three per character from Mountain of Faith which is technically the only one that had that, but whatever, not the point. Um, as you can see, we have Yukari, Suika and Aya for Reimu, and for Marissa, Alice, Patchouli, as you'd expect, and then Natori. Natori's not exactly the one you'd expect, but she's there anyway. So, for Reimu, the shot types, well, all of the shot types in this game are very interesting, but there's not a huge amount of balance within them. That's, that's the major problem of this. Like, this shot type is by far and away the absolute best of the game, and there's no no comparing it to anything else. It's not quite like Mountain of Faith, where Marissa C can compete with Reimu B, and Reimu A is actually decent, and, you know, like, or oh, Cherry Blossom, where Marissa A and Reimu B are both decent, Saki is good if you can use her, etc, etc. In this game, there's one shot type that's really good, one shot type that's good if you can use it, Two shot, to two, uh, technically three, but I'd like to say two shot types that are just about okay, and then, yeah, one slightly below that. It's like okay if you can use it, and then the last one just plain old sucks. So, yeah, this is Reimu's Needle shot for this game. It's the front focus based thing. Unlike every other game in existence, I can't use this shot type for a change. Like, I, I use front focus shot types in just about every single game. The only one you could argue is Mountain of Faith, and that's only because Marissa C technically isn't front focus, I guess, because you place the options and stuff. But yeah, I think the reason for it is not because of the bomb and stuff like that. I think the reason for it is that the options roll, yeah, as it says, rolling option, basically they circle around you and I find that's a little bit sort of inconsistent in the power. Or maybe this game is just that hard and that I can't use the front focus shot type for this one, I don't know. Anyway, um, every character has got their own, you know, the Yokais have got their own support skills that they add to you, so Yukari's Gap Hacks basically lets you switch sides on the screen. It's difficult to use in some circumstances because you do have to watch out on the other side of the screen. It's a very laggy move, as you would expect, and it is very vulnerable to killing you because I don't think you can bomb out of it, so... Be careful of that, I suppose. Um, but it is very good for streaming sections and stuff like that. The bomb is... It, it's a cancelor, it's nothing more. It's its like uh, Yukari's Imperishable Night Attack. It's very weak, to be honest. It's, it does like clear all the bullets off the screen, which is good, but beyond that, it's... Yeah, it's survival, nothing else. A lot of the bombs in this game are survival and nothing else, so get used to that. 
Uh, Suica is one of the okay shot types that just so happens to be the only one I can like use properly. I don't know. It's it's this game's attempt at homing. There isn't a strict homing shot type in this one. This is the best you're gonna get, where the options will move towards stuff when they get close, but they don't strictly home. It's a front focus with slight spread type of thing. But it does take the only piercing of this game. This is where Marissa's piercing laser type of thing comes in, I guess. And that's kind of weird seeing that on Reimu, but oh well. Um, Suika's power, as you can read, it collects all the items on the screen. Very useful if you're just collecting power and life pieces after boss attacks. Not so useful if you want to try and score, because you don't get very much from that. We'll talk about that later. Um, the bomb is shorter than Yukari's one, but it does give you more attack power as the difficulty goes up. It's not so good on lower difficulties, but as the difficulty increases, more bullets get absorbed by it and get fired back out, and it turns out to be a good thing. Um, for Aya, Aya's special ability is her speed, which is like the absolute worst thing ever because that's what sucks about freaking shoot the bullet and stuff is that they've got free speed tiers, and that's why I'll never play those because I hate them. Um, yeah, her attack is interesting. The options go top and bottom from you, and as you move unfocused you get to redirect them. It's kind of like uh, Sakuya B, I guess, but it also has behind shots as well. So that that's interesting. It also means that technically you have the same firepower at levels 1 and 2, and at level 3 and 4, providing you use the side which has more shots. Um, the bomb is very, very powerful. It's probably the strongest bomb of the game if you use it correctly. Probably actually Patchouli's bomb is stronger, but Patchouli's bomb being stronger is so specific, and this lasts a lot longer, so it's good. Basically just makes a circle around you, and that dark circle kind of uh, goes ahead and beats stuff up, so it's pretty good. Um. Marissa, Marissa A is technically a very good shot type, and I do like this one a lot. If it wasn't for the fact that Marissa is not as good at this game as the others, I would probably be using this one a lot more. Because I, I, I use this one on hard, and it's awesome. But anyway, the gimmick with this one is that you get 8 power instead of 4. The power is not quite doubled, you know, the value of the stuff, so you do have to get more power items for it, and if you die at max power, you're not going to get max power back. There's the disadvantages for the shot. I guess the other technical disadvantage is that it's reverse focus. It's... It's not what you would expect. Normally when you focus, you get concentrated fire in the center, and that's what this shot type has when you're unfocused, which is... the the one thing that really makes it pretty bad at the lunatic and stuff like that because you've got to unfocus to actually do significant damage and that means that you can't dodge stuff very reliably and this game is very very dense so not a great shot type at lunatic. The, um, the bomb is expectedly weak. It's basically a mini Shanghai laser thing. It's very good if you fire it on top of the enemies, because it the, the doll itself has a hitbox too. So it's very good at that, and you can get away with um, some good stuff with that. And it is useful in some situations, but usually a straight vertical clearing laser is not the best. And the bomb is very, very short, so you're probably going to have to use like two or three unless you just auto-bomb stuff, at which point you probably will use two. Um, Patchouli's shot type, most interesting of the game, to say the least. Uh, it has Patchouli's typical five-element thing, and... Yeah, every, every time you tap shot and focus at the same time, you change what your shot type looks like. So you've got front focus, you've got spread, you've got side focus, you've got behind attacks. Very, very interesting. This, the catch with it is it's not very powerful. Um, Reimu B is technically stronger in like front focusness stuff, and all of the others are basically fringe attack sort of stuff. So really, this this shot type suffers in power. It also uh, suffers in bomb as well because the bomb 
whilst it's very strong, is very short-lived and very, very narrow in range. It basically creates Olympic rings, and if the enemy is inside one of those rings, it takes damage. The good thing with that is that the rings overlap, so you can actually have a point where at least three, I think actually all five rings can overlap if you're very good, and that will clear pretty much any attack ever. It's the most powerful attack of the game by far. However, that pretty much means you have to be shotgunning the enemy to start with, and that pretty much means you're going to have to auto bomb. If you're very good at the game, then this shot type is very nice, but it's not really that great for higher difficulties. And then the Tori shot type is absolutely terrible. The other thing I forgot to mention about Alice's shot type is that the options fire very slow shots, so it's not very good at tracking sections. The same is said about Notori's thing, because the, the, uh, the air torpedo, it's basically supposed to be front focus, but what the torpedoes do is they fire backwards first and then go slowly up the screen, so high precision my ass, pretty much. They, they don't do any sort of aiming, so it's a glorified front focus shot which has a delayed option thing. They're very weak, and yeah, the, the support skill basically is terrible compared to what Raymu has for some of hers. Um, the bomb is not really a bomb at all. It creates a... what it says, it creates a barrier where if the barrier takes that, you know, if you take damage when the barrier is up, all the bullets on the screen get killed. It doesn't do damage, so it's basically a worse version of uh, Yukari's bomb. The only thing is you'll get half the power back if you don't actually need the barrier. But it's terrible, like, seriously. The only thing that's good about that shot type is death bombing, because if you death bomb you don't get killed, but you still get the barrier up. That requires very precise timing though, so it, it's a terrible shot type. And I have actually done like two stages with this, so let's just show exactly what I mean with this. You can see delayed fire on the thing, they're, well, they're just about strong enough to kill this off, but yeah, and then obviously focusing brings them in closer, so glorified front focus. Using the bomb creates the barrier here, and this barrier will dissipate everything on the screen. Okay, it does a little bit of damage, but it's not even as much as Yukari's bomb, and Yukari's bomb is very weak anyway. Bombs in this game tend to be a lot more for surviving rather than killing stuff, which is different from a lot of the games. So uh, I'm thinking in particular the last one was usually, you know, Mountain of Faith. That's probably why it was so quote unquote easy, because yeah, bombs and bombs did a lot of damage in that game. Um also, Graze is obviously back in this game, and Graze is the major focus of this game in general. You see, the bar at the bottom is your point item determining thing, like it normally is, but it also happens to let you auto-collect stuff if the if the gauge gets filled. You see, as, as you graze... well, actually, it's not really doing it very much at the moment, which is sort of surprising. I wonder why that is. Like, I'm pretty sure I am grazing, and it's not actually increasing my bar at all, but when you go to the top of the screen, it kind of does. So, yeah, you also collect the stuff when you have maxed, uh, maxed out thing, pretty much. When, the, when that bar is maxed, you also collect the items, which is fine. And, well, that pretty well determines the thing. The graze also, like, adds to the point thing. You can see it's now at 0.01 as my minimum. Every time you graze 100 bullets, the point items get uh, increased. The value increases by 1%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you are starting with a base value of like, you know, in the higher difficulties, when you start with a base value of like 100,000, it is actually quite a lot. So... Yeah, 100, 200,000. If you get 1% more of that, that is a significant amount. The green items will once again increase your point item value and stuff, just like they did before, and that's all fine and dandy. Uh, large ones increase it by 100, small ones in increase it by 10. You won't obviously only get the small ones when you get full power, because the, that's what the uh, red items turn into. And um, 
I died, which is perfectly great. Yeah, that's that's basically it right there. That that's the gist of it. If you die, you lose all of the value of the uh, the point items that like all of the green items that you had. And I think that's generally it. As you you sort of would have seen there as well, actually. If you die to a card, you don't get a life piece for it. But if you don't die to an attack, whether it's a spell card or a non-spell, you can get a life piece out of it. Five life pieces give you a new life, and this is where the resources come in in this game. So yeah, you've got bombing as power, life pieces instead of like point life and stuff. That's pretty much the pretty much the gist of this game. So yeah, um that's yeah, that that is it, literally. The gist of the thing right there. We've got going underground, six different shot types, unfortunately very ill balanced, and fun times to be had. So yeah, I have no idea exactly when I'm going to get the run clear and whatnot, but for now, this has been Gamer Cat. We have been playing you know, the introduction to subterranean animism, and join me next time when we do the proper playthrough, I guess.